Now I'm going to demonstrate today that we can use a voltmeter and when we start a motorcycle we can do three different tests. We're going to do surface voltage, that's what the battery is with no load or anything on it. We're going to do a load test to see how far it drops down and we're going to give you some specifications for that. And then once the vehicle's running, we'll do a charging system test and we haven't moved the meter at all. We're going to be able to do all three of those tests and that's going to be able to give us the health of everything going on there. The other thing that we're going to do today, I think we got a great opportunity, is we're going to be able to show how something can very easily be misdiagnosed. So let's go ahead and just start with this now. Go ahead and uh, look right here. You can see here we got our battery uh, hooked up to a multimeter on DC volts and we have 12.19. No key on. I'll go ahead and turn the key on. Drops down to 11.88. But let's just focus on key off and we have 12.2, it'll float around there. And people will say, oh, I have a 12 volt battery. Oh, so the battery's good. And this is what I wanna prove, or I wanna show you here. So if you go ahead and look at this chart, take a look here at these voltages. We've got a couple different conventional batteries here. And maintenance free are a little bit higher, but not a lot. So if you take a look here, 12.2, 12.1, that's only 50% charged. That battery is 12 volt battery should be 12.6 at 100%. It is it is drained. It needs charged. Now here's the problem you're going to run into. As I do the load test on a discharged battery, you're going to see that this drops down quite a bit. Drops down like seven volts on a conventional battery. We don't want this to drop less than nine volts. On a maintenance free, it's 10, but on a conventional, it's nine volts. And watch what happens here on this one when it's only a 50% charge. Also listen to the sound that the, the engine makes here. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to rev the engine up and check the charging system. This revving up of the engine is called break-even voltage. Check out our other videos in our electrical playlist for more detailed information on this procedure. Okay, as you can see, per the specification, we said that the minimum we would want on a load test would be 9 volts on a conventional battery. So that bounce in the 7, it would be really easy to say, yep, the battery's bad. And you could hear the motor really grunting because it was, with the battery being low, it didn't have the available amperage to be able to turn this high compression motor over. So what you're going to see next is we're going to go ahead and fully charge this battery. We're not going to do anything but charge the battery get it to where the surface voltage is 12.6 and watch what happens on the load test that it should stay around that 9 volts it'll be good and we won't misdiagnose it so watch that alright guys we're back with part 2 of this we went ahead and charged the battery alright you're going to see our surface voltage now obviously after charge the battery we're at that 12.6 so now watch what happens when we actually go to load test and uh, see what happens here with a fully charged battery You can definitely see the difference in there. All right, let's wrap this up. What you saw in this video was how easily it'd be to misdiagnose. If you don't have a fully charged battery to begin with, you're gonna to start to do load tests and it's gonna look like there's a problem. You've gotta know the individual steps that you need to do. So fully charged battery, then perform your tests. And the other thing you saw in this video is that we did three things. We did our surf surface voltage test, made sure we were at a 100% charged battery, then we did the load test as we were cranking it over. We don't want to see less than nine volts. And then our final one is we did the charging system test. So there's a lot you can do at one time. All right, let's do a little summary here. You know, the, the main focus of this video really is the fact that you need to perform the test correctly. And we can talk about that all day long over and over, but it, it's the fact that so many times there is just an assumption and it's jumped into really quick and it really isn't going to fix the problem. In this particular case, you know, with that battery not being fully charged, you saw that it would load test poorly. So a tech would very easily go, oh, it needs a new battery. And if they're reading a work order that had a complaint of, let's say, a hard starting, well, sure, a low battery or a weak battery is going to create hard starting. But you got to remember, what if they left the key on or what if they did something that drained that battery and that was, you know, uh, they were taking it out of the pickup or off the trailer and left the key on for 10 minutes or something and that's what drained it down. As a technician, you have to verify all those individual 
things to make sure that you're on the right diagno diagnosis. I mean, uh, you have an issue of hard starting. Who knows? Maybe it's got foul plugs, tight valves. There's so many other things. I'm going to tell you this. If that battery wasn't a problem at all and you hand it back to the customer saying it's fixed with the hard starting of this new battery and your definition of hard starting and their definition of hard starting. You saw this bike with the, this is such a great example. That's why I was, I was passionate about making this video. You'd have to ask yourself this. Did this bike start with the uh, original battery being at a 50% charge and only drop into the just six and a half, seven volts? The answer was yes. Did it start hard? Did it have a big grunt and then go, ugh? And then start, yes, that to me would be hard starting. Now, if a technician doesn't know the bike or the model and doesn't know better, they might say, oh, but started, ship it out the door, customer gets it, it's going to have the exact same problem because, you know, that wasn't the reason it was uh, being difficult. So regardless, uh, check your work, uh, do individual steps and everything. And I mean, any bike that has a battery out there, I mean, that's just, a, you know, the original source of all electrical power. We need to make sure we have good connections and that it will perform exactly how it's supposed to so that we can look at all the other possibilities um, to actually address the problem that the customer may really have. So uh, I appreciate you checking out the channel. Uh, just keep wrenching and uh, make it a great day. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.